Good morning, makers. Welcome to Cooking with Joe 101. Just kidding, of course. I'm not going to be doing any cooking, um, but I will be making something. So a few days ago, I installed this, well, my hood here, my hood top for the kitchen counter. Now, in Malta, um, houses are not made of wood. Uh, they're made of brick and mortar. So if you want to drill holes in the ceiling and stuff like that, well, you're gonna to have to dig through concrete. Now, apart from that, I actually have a false ceiling here made out of plaster. So it separates the concrete and the actual ceiling that is visible by about 12 centimeters. And in those 12 centimeters, you have wiring going through, um, you have the exhaust pipe for the hood. In order for me to install this thing, which by the way, was absolutely exhausting, I had to make an inspection hole into the false ceiling so that I can put my head through, see if there, if there are any wiring that I need to connect I can do it just over it. If there are any inspections to be done on the exhaust, uh, I can do it through them. So, um, I did a hole. What you see up there is the hole that I cut through um, the full ceiling. Now, when I cut that hole, I, I, I did it with certain measurements in mind. So I wanted my head to go through it, which it does. And I wanted to make sure that any size I do it, I can actually fix it in one way or another. Having large scale 3D printers helps a lot. So that hole is exactly 250 by 250 millimeters. When I say exactly, it should be 250 by 250. I calculated it, I measured it, it's roughly 250 by 250, and it's also roughly very square. It's also got a thickness of 13 millimeters, and that is the thickness of the plaster sheet that covers the false ceiling. So what I want to do now is make a panel that actually just fits in there, which I can remove anytime um, in order for me to do servicing over the foil ceiling. So what I'm gonna do now is finish my coffee, head to Fusion 360, and let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so recently I've been watching a lot of Lars Christensen uh, videos on Fusion 360. If you don't know who he is, I highly recommend you check him out. I'll leave links in the video description. The guy's a genius of Fusion 360, and he does a lot of tutorials and he explains things in a way that it's very difficult not to follow. So I kind of made myself a uh, promise that I will watch at least one video a day in order to learn something new. In fact, there are quite a few things that I've learned which I'm gonna be putting into practice today. So the first thing I want to do here is basically start a sketch. I'm gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna use the top plane for that sketch and I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Now, the, uh, the inspection hole that I did is 250 by 250, roughly but that should work. So we'll choose, that's our first base. Now I want to do a larger rectangle to cover the lip um, of the inspection hall. So we're gonna do, it's another rectangle. And I'll do this with a one centimeter lip. So we'll do this as 270 by 270. Now the first thing that I've learned is that these are black, these lines for the first rectangle are black because they are constrained to that little circle down there. The reason why these are blue is because they are not constrained to anything. They're simply printed in midair. So what we need to do is constrain those dimensionally. So we're gonna click on the D and you're gonna get that little icon there. So we're gonna click on that line and that line and we're gonna do a constraint of 10 millimeters. We're also gonna do another constraint from this line to this line and do another 10 and now those two are perfectly centered, and as you can see, all lines are black, meaning that they are dimensionally constrained. Next, I want to draw another rectangle, and this rectangle will pretty much give kind of like a wall, uh, which will go into the um, inspection outlet, the inspection hole, which will just glide through. So we're gonna create another rectangle once again. Um, we'll do this maybe two millimeters um, thickness of the wall. So if the center square is 250 by 250, this will be um, 246 by 246, giving two millimeter to each wall. Gonna do dimensional constraints on those as well of two millimeters and another one with these walls and then two millimeters and once again, Everything is constrained and everything is centered. And that is pretty much the basis of the design. Now what I need to do is start extruding things. We're gonna start with the outer lip. I'm gonna extrude this two millimeters 
That should roughly be about 10 layers, more than enough if I'm printing at 200 microns. Now, in order to extrude the wrist, I'm just gonna re-enable the sketches. I'm gonna extrude two millimeters on the center pane. Now this, this would be the lip here. Um, so this has to be extruded further because I want the lip to, well, that inner lip to actually go inside the inspection hole. And then I wanna do kind of like flexible hinges, let's call them, that will lock it in place. So the thickness of the plaster is 1.3 centimeters, so 13 millimeters. We have the thickness of the bottom panel, which is two millimeters, so that makes it to uh, 15 millimeters. And then we're gonna add an extra 10 millimeters for the hinges. So that will be 25 millimeters in total. That starts pretty much covering the whole design. Now it's a matter of me uh, doing the hinges. So the easiest way for me to do this is by creating a sketch. I'm gonna use that face and I'm gonna draw a line. Now, I want to draw this line across from here to there. Now, as you can see, I didn't look for measurements because all I have to do is click on D for dimensional, and I'm gonna do it 10 millimeters down. And that will be kind of like where the hinge will, uh, will put itself in place. Now, I just need to draw the lines for the rest. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a spline. I'm going to do it on this face, so kind of explain better what I'm, I intend to do. So I want to create a spline that will kind of go up and there. That pretty much works for me. So the idea here is to extrude that and have it as part of the hinge. Um, and the reason for that is when you have the plaster, which will be, let's, let's say that this is the plaster. Um, once you push the, uh, the pane, the panel inside the inspection hole, these will flex backwards to go through the plaster and then flex back into place, flex back into place and lock themselves in. So I'm going to remove that part there and this would simply be extruded outwards. Now, in order for me to copy that spline onto the other faces and be able to extrude it, I'm just gonna copy it. So, Control-C, I'm gonna stop the sketch. I'm gonna create a new sketch on that plane and paste. And as you can see, it automatically goes there, but if I hover over it, I cannot extrude because it goes onto this face. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to draw a line from there to there. And now it's closed off. I'll stop the sketch once again. And create another sketch on that plane. Control V. And I'm just going to move this over there. Perfect. Draw a line. And once again, that's also closed off. And that's basically it. Now, all I have to do is simply highlight that and extrude all the way to the corners. And I can do the rest in the same way. Okay, so that is basically what I'm looking for. However, Obviously, if I try to slide this in to the inspection hole, what's gonna happen is that those cannot bend inwards because they're all connected. So in order to minimize waste of material and also have it as easy to slide in as possible, what I need to do is just remove a lot of this material and just leave two hinges on each side, um, which should give enough rigidity when it's in place. Um, and also it's a good balance of um, very little material waste. So in order for me to do what I intend to do, um, which I don't think anyone has understood yet, but we'll figure it out very soon. I'm going to create a sketch. I'm going to choose that wall. Now, uh, even though these are being highlighted, um, if I draw a line, it's not going to draw a line here. It's going to draw it on that wall because that's the one, that's the pane I highlighted. 
So what I want is to create a line, actually a construction line, and I want to go down five millimeters uh, because that would be the center of those two parts. And then I'm going to create D. I'm going to click on D for dimensional constraints. I'm going to click on that line and that, and I'm going to do 40 millimeters. I want to do the same thing over here again, and I'll explain in a minute as to why I'm doing this. I also want to do dimensional constraints here. Do 40. There you go. So now I have center points. And what I want to do with those center points is create a rectangle, but through a center point rectangle. And that becomes 10 by 40. I need another one over here. Ten by forty. Now, those will be the hinges that I want to create. And to give you an idea of what they're going to look like, I'm simply going to draw a normal line there to close that part off. I'm going to draw a line from there to there, and then another one there. Now, all I have to do is simply grab that, extrude. Extrude, and if I extrude outwards, you can see, switch the sketches back on, extrude those as well, so I can remove those parts. Now, as you can see, I've created my hinges. Let me switch off the sketches so you can see better. Now, all I need to do is repeat that step on the other three uh, sides. However, what I can do, just to minimize a bit the work, is if I take that panel there and extrude this way, as soon as it intersects, it cuts. So it's basically doing the same exact thing on the opposite plane. And now all I have to do is just do the dimensions on one side and then do the same thing, which is extrude for the other one. So that's two sides ready. All I have to do is just do the rest. And there you have it. And that's basically all I wanted. Uh, this is gonna slide into the inspection hole. Uh, those eight um, hinges are kind of gonna lock it in place. And that just should fit neatly. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do is create a bit of a chamfer uh, around the edges and that will that will help in two ways. So I'm gonna create chamfer, we'll do one millimeter chamfer, should be enough. Yep. So that chamfer there will help in one of two ways. First thing, it kind of gives it a cleaner look rather than just a square edge uh, when it's on the ceiling. Secondly, it's gonna make it easier for me to get it off the build plate. This is gonna be printed in uh, 3D Prima ABS on a very large scale, uh, 270 by 270. So I want to try and find an easy way uh, where I can get the um, the scalpel, scalpel? Um, just underneath and just lift it off very slowly. Now that that's done, all that's left is to export this as SDL, throw it in Idea Maker, and then throw it off to the printer. The Pro 2 has done an absolutely fantastic job considering that this is ABS. Um, warping from the corners lifting was almost non-noticeable. It was literally negligible for a 16 hour print on ABS. That is incredible. So I want to specifically thank uh, 3D Prima for sending me the Pro 2 for review. I can do projects like these which 
makes life so much easier. These are the flaps that I designed and the reason why they're like this is because I want them to hook up into the lip of, uh, of the plaster and then sort of lock themselves in. Um, and since ABS has a bit of flex, this kind of just kind of springs back itself into place and should keep that thing, um, should keep this thing nice and tight in place. The first layer is almost flawless, um, which is quite impressive considering that the Pro 2 does not have a bed leveling function. It just has the Z offset uh, limit switch. So it's, it's so perfectly calibrated from the factory that it just, it prints beautifully. And this is what, 270, if I remember correctly, that we printed this. And that's almost the full build plate. And it just printed it perfectly. So now it's time to try it out and see how this thing fits. I'm gonna be honest, I have not test fitted this yet. Uh, so we're gonna figure out together if it works. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to reiterate. Uh, I really don't want to because it took like 16 hours to print. So yeah, let's see how this goes. It's almost a perfect fit. Um, I'm happy with that. That will make do. Uh, I just have to sand it down, paint it the same color as the ceiling because I still have to repaint the ceiling because I did lots of boo-boos when I was making the hole um, and putting up the, uh, the hood. But other than that, that is a success. That is it for today, guys. I want to thank 3D Prima for uh, supplying me with the Pro 2 in order to do projects like these. Uh, I also want to thank Spanner Hands for sponsoring this channel and also my Patreons for allowing me to keep on doing what I love doing. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.